What's up guys, we're back in Needham today. Uh, last time we were here, we caught up with Mike and just started the excavation. We're dealing with water. We ran into a lot more than just a little bit of water. We confirmed really whether or not it was due to uh, defrosting and just the overall ground water level. Mike, come on man, don't be shy. So last time we were here, we were talking, we had started, we were down in this area here, and I think you had noted that you had hit ledge, but we were also we dealing with water, and water being yes. a big issue in the hole. Yep. So I think it was that day you had reached out to a geotech engineer. Yep. We wanted to make sure that we were doing our due diligence and efforts to whatever we're gonna build here, we wanna make sure we know how to best position it. Yeah. What was their recommendation? All right, so they came out. We dug a little test pit for them. They got to, you know, observe the soil conditions and like the bearing capacity was great. The issue was we had a lot of water. So in order to stabilize, make sure that we provide a solid footing for this house, their recommendation was to install six inches of stone underneath where the footing's gonna be and then compact it um, just to make sure that everything does stabilize. And, and not only, so the stone is to help kind of give us that base layer, like you said, yep. but it also, we dealt with ledge, right? Yeah. So we have ledge right here, which last time we were talking about the shale, uh, which now it looks like shale because it's been hammered up. So we're actually raising the elevation of the house. What, and yep. how much are we raising it? Uh, we're doing about six inches. And why is that? That's to give us some separation from where the water table is. So the fact that we hit bedrock, right? Your water kind of like percolates down through the different layers of the soil. And then when you hit the bedrock, it's, it's sitting there, right? It can't go through it. We're bringing in the six inches of stone to help lift this up, give the water somewhere to go underneath that footing. So then this house isn't just sitting in a puddle the entire time. So if that concrete footing was on that bedrock, it would just it would always be, be wet. In wet, right? Yep. So now we're creating a little separation. Now, it's important to note, this house is actually already being risen up. Yes. And one thing that we're really conscious about is what that front stoop might look like in comparison to the street. Yep. So are we, how much are we bringing this house up? So we're bringing it up to, it's gonna be pretty close to level with the sidewalk. Which will look really nice. Yes, yeah, so it's not gonna be lifted up on this giant mountain, so you don't have to it's worry about that. It's not gonna be on this pedestal, like, yeah. like some of the, the no. new homes that we've seen. But in comparison to what the elevation was before, it was to really where it is now, down yeah, yeah, we're down in a hole. As you can see, we got we got our beautiful duck pond out back, <laughs> that low area. Not really so, a duck pond. <laughs> no, we're gonna have to address that, and so we'll, we'll start taking care of that now. But. So let's walk this way. But while we're walking, I'm gonna we're gonna jump over this here. So over here, we're actually, are we in the location of the two car garage? We uh, are close. The one car garage? Right here. One car garage is here. Yeah. So, okay, I got you. So we actually have a little bit more of ex excavation to do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually standing one car garage and this is actually your mud room. Mud room. Right. And that and it works goes out. back and that, the reason it bumps out back there is where that staircase goes down to the basement level. Gotcha. And then you're, two bay garage as you pull in is back over where that puddle is right now and so that's we got to start addressing that so it's interesting to stand over here because looking back at the excavation you're probably about seven feet and yeah. here you're probably closer to three, three. Yeah. so it kind of show, goes to show how much we have to really bring up a lot of this land and how critical it's going to be to work with not only the site guys but the civil and the overall you know the overall team to make sure that we're grading this in a way that doesn't look like it's mounded. Yeah. And that's the biggest concern. One of the, one of the things that came up is that, you know, in communicating with a client, we had we explained the benefit of raising this house up for yep. the longevity because of water. But one of the questions came up was, well, is it going to be too high? And that's something that again, going back, the house was nestled in. We don't want to make put this on a pedestal. We want to really be thoughtful in it. But it, it just goes to show like we have these low points in the, the, the lot and we're at bottom of elevation here and we're actually starting to see this is our base layer, our, the six inches of stone that they're recommending. Yep. So from here, wh what is our next step? So we got about another day of bringing stone in. Then we're gonna compact that, get it nice and stable, make sure everything binds up. Our civil engineer will come back and they're gonna pin all the corners for our footing. And in so, the six inches of stone. Yep, yeah. yep. And so then our, our foundation guy can come in, we're gonna start putting, you know, get the footing prepped and ready to go. 
and then in while they're doing that down on, on the main house that's where we can work on these smaller areas where the garage is where we're only going to have frost walls right so we only have to dig down well i mean this really has to go down three feet so over there we're going to be barely scratching the surface right Right, and then the and the the two lo locations of the garage are both slab on grade, yep. with the exception of the back corner of the garage has a staircase yeah. to get down to basement level yep. as our second means of egress there. Cool. So what, as far as pumping this water out, is this something that we're doing on a daily, or is this pump going to run continuously until we're out of hole? Uh, it's kind of day to day right now. Uh, depending on what we have for weather, warm temperatures, things thawing. What are we you know, finding when we're getting here in the morning? Just, we get like, you know, f roughly four inches of water in the bottom of the hole. And so you run the pump for about an hour. It does a pretty good job of, you know, drying it up. And you can kind of see, I mean, it's mucky right now because they've been playing around in sure. it, but um, usually it's not as bad as that. Yeah, I think uh, Bob was saying it's actually pretty clear water. So it's, yeah. you know, yep. pretty evident that it's it is brown, brown water. water. Yep. Say this pump goes off, we come back tomorrow and the stone is wet. Is there any concern with Geo for that stone to be wet after it's compacted or? Nope. So one, because realistically, this is the condition it's go, this stone's gonna live in for yep. the. That's why we're gonna run around with a compactor. And as you do that, you're gonna find, you know, a few areas that, you know, the ground will, you know, chew up some of that stone. Mm -hmm. But if you keep hammering it in, it'll bind up, and then that's what they want to see is when it gets solid. Yeah, really good compaction. Yep. So beyond that, once we get our footings in place, you know, one of the details that we're always putting or always including is our capillary break, and it's even more important here, being that we are dealing with groundwater. Mm -hmm. If that fo footing is wet, we don't want water wicking up through that footing into through the into the foundation wall. So we'll have that, you know, basically waterproofing layer on top of our footing prior to our walls going on and then we'll have our waterproofing layer on the outside of the foundation wall, which will create a monolithic uh, seal between footing and wall. Beyond the capillary action, we also wanna make sure that we're preventing water from ever entering in, into the basement. So there'll be things like the vapor barrier that will be underneath the slab, which will be monolithic, that will prevent the slab from getting wet, but some pumps. A couple weeks ago, I had posted something on my Instagram, hey, what sump pump does everyone recommend? What, what sump pump did we end up doing, uh, going with here and why? Was it Zoller? I think it's a company, Zoller, right? Zoller, yeah. Zoller, yeah. Um, so they're between talking, like you reached out, and I think it was. It was I think I was a Zoller seventy-five or something. I like forget that, the model small, number. Right? Yeah. So they they I ended up buying a, it was a whole kit. It comes with this their basin that you can tie right into. It's actually a gasketed lid on that, so that's something we're going to use for our passive radon as well. It'll go right out of that sump pit. Um, and so they, they had this really nice kit that we just ended up purchasing two of them for this house. And how big, do you remember how big they are? Uh, it's about a 10 gallon basin. 10 gallon basin. Yeah. So we'll have one on either end of the foundation. Yep. And something you skipped over there real quick, the gasketed lid tying in our passive radon allows, since we're gonna have that perimeter drain on the inside, we're also gonna have a secondary perimeter drain on the outside. Yeah. So it's really these redundant systems but in, rather than tying in our passive to that drain, we can actually tie that passive right into the lid of yeah, that Yeah, it's a vented lid, yep. Cool. So we'll touch base when we get uh, a little bit further along on, on this job, hopefully coming out of the ground with, uh, with some concrete. Yes. I have a deal with Mike that once he goes vertical, he gets an office trailer here. Uh, until yes. then, stay tuned, we'll see you guys next week.